A lot of us have heard our parents and grandparents say we're in our last days. Is the end actually near? Meaning end of the world. Multiple videos of horn sounds coming from the sky. on the God's Motivation channel. A lot of us have heard our parents and grandparents say we're in our last days. Is the end actually near? Meaning end of the world. Multiple videos of horn sounds coming from the sky. It's evident that the conclusion of our world is inevitable. Looming over us with an element of unexpectedness that keeps us on edge, preparedness becomes paramount in the face of such uncertainty. The signs of this impending end are not distant phenomena they unfold in our very midst, perhaps even within arm's reach. Have you borne witness to these harbingers? Today the veil will be lifted, and you'll behold the evidence firsthand. So let us not squander a moment, and delve into the unfolding narrative among the recent events that have shaken our collective consciousness. The Philippines stands out with its tumultuous encounters with nature in the tumult of 2023. A tempest of unparalleled ferocity ravaged the nation, leaving in its wake a trail of destruction. While many captured the storm's fury on film, one observer stumbled upon something extraordinary amidst the chaos. Listen closely to the footage, and you'll discern an eerie echo cutting through the cacophony of wind and rain a haunting sound reminiscent of a celestial trumpet, as if signaling an impending judgment upon the land. In the stillness of an ordinary day, a man finds himself on his balcony, a silent observer to the symphony of nature. The sky, once serene, suddenly becomes the stage for an extraordinary spectacle that defies all logic and reason. With bated breath, he witnesses the emergence of a mysterious object hurtling through the heavens, a silent interloper in the celestial ballet. This enigmatic entity, unlike anything he has ever seen, streaks across the firmament with astonishing velocity, a streak of light against the canvas of the night. Its movement, an affront to the laws of physics, challenges the very fabric of reality. What force propels it forward, defying the natural order with its incredible speed and agility? As he grapples with this perplexing sight, a profound sense of unease washes over him, like a chill wind on a summer's eve. The object's trajectory, inexplicably contrary to the prevailing winds, defies all conventional wisdom. How could such a phenomenon occur? And what dark forces lie behind its inexplicable flight? Yet, it is not just the sight of this otherworldly apparition that sends shivers down his spine, it is the sound that accompanies its passage. A deafening roar reverberates through the air, a cacophony of sound that pierces the silence of the night. Its origin? A mystery unto itself leaves him trembling with fear and trepidation. What strange alchemy of nature could produce such a thunderous sound? And what cosmic forces are at play in the heavens above? These questions, like riddles without answers, linger in the depths of his mind, haunting him with their inscrutable mysteries. Turning to ancient texts for solace and understanding, he finds echoes of these strange occurrences in the annals of prophecy. The signs of the end times foretold in ancient scripture seem to manifest before his very eyes. The storm clouds gather on the horizon, heralding a time of reckoning and renewal. In the sacred pages of the Bible, he finds passages that speak of tumultuous storms and celestial trumpets, harbingers of divine judgment and redemption. Could it be that these cosmic events are not mere accidents of nature but part of a grand design, orchestrated by unseen hands? With each passing moment, the weight of these revelations bears down upon him, like Atlas carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders. The end times, once a distant specter on the horizon, now loom large in his consciousness, casting a shadow over his every thought and action. And yet, amidst the darkness, there is a glimmer of hope, a flicker of light in the depths of despair. For in the midst of chaos and upheaval, there lies the promise of redemption and renewal. As the old world crumbles, 
a new world rises from the ashes, like a phoenix reborn. In the words of the ancient prophets, he finds comfort and guidance. A roadmap for navigating the turbulent waters of the end times. For though the path may be fraught with peril and uncertainty, he knows that he does not walk alone. With faith as his compass and hope as his guiding star, he steps boldly into the unknown, ready to face whatever trials may come his way. And so, as the night sky fades into dawn, he stands on his balcony, a sentinel in the twilight hours, watching and waiting for the signs of the times to unfold before him. For in the end, it is not the darkness that he fears, but the light that will ultimately lead him home. Throughout the annals of human history, Natural disasters have often been interpreted through the lens of eschatology by many devout Christians. These catastrophic events ranging from earthquakes to hurricanes have frequently been seen as harbingers of the impending end times, serving as tangible manifestations of God's judgment and the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. In recent years, the escalation in both frequency and intensity of such calamities has only intensified these interpretations further fueling discussions regarding their theological significance. Take, for instance, the devastating Hurricane Katrina, whose wrath ravaged the United States in 2005, leaving behind a trail of destruction and loss of life. While some viewed this catastrophe as a divine admonition, signaling God's displeasure with humanity's transgressions, definitive conclusions about such events remain elusive. Similarly, the catastrophic earthquake and tsunami that struck Japan in 2011, resulting in widespread devastation and loss of thousands of lives, prompted soul-searching inquiries into the role of natural disasters within the framework of biblical prophecy. Moreover, the recent storm in the Philippines serves as yet another poignant reminder of the Earth's volatile disposition, manifesting in the form of unprecedented weather patterns and environmental upheavals. The surge in the frequency and severity of such natural calamities has sparked widespread concern and speculation, particularly within Christian circles, about their correlation with biblical end-time prophecies. As the specter of the climate crisis looms ever larger on the global stage, with rising sea levels and extreme weather events becoming increasingly commonplace, many believers perceive these ecological disturbances as echoes of creation itself groaning in anticipation of the imminent return of Christ. Echoing the sentiments expressed in Romans chapter 8 verse 22, for we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. Yet, amidst the tumult of environmental catastrophes and celestial phenomena, a singular question lingers, could the strange sounds echoing through the skies be interpreted as the clarion call of God's trumpet heralding the culmination of human history and the onset of divine judgment? The eschatological tapestry woven within the pages of Revelation unveils a series of extraordinary heavenly signs that are said to precede the Great Tribulation, a period of unparalleled chaos and upheaval. Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 to 14 vividly depicts these cosmic phenomena, describing a cataclysmic sequence of events wherein the earth itself convulses in anticipation of its final reckoning. The sun darkens, the moon turns to blood, and the stars fall from the heavens, a spectacle unparalleled since the dawn of creation. Joel chapter 2 verses 30 to 31 further reinforces this apocalyptic imagery, I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, foretelling a time when the heavens themselves shall bear witness to divine judgment, signaling the imminent arrival of the day of the Lord. Amidst the uncertainty and trepidation surrounding the end times, believers find solace and reassurance in the promise of victory through Christ. The Apostle Paul's exhortation in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Reminds believers that their spiritual weapons are mighty, capable of dismantling even the strongest of fortresses. Thus, while the signs of the end times may evoke fear and apprehension, they also serve as beacons of hope, guiding believers towards a future imbued with divine promise and providence. 
As humanity stands on the precipice of unprecedented upheaval and turmoil, the words of Revelation beckon believers to heed the call of prophecy and prepare themselves for the trials that lie ahead. Through diligent study and unwavering faith, believers can navigate the complexities of the end times with confidence, knowing that they are firmly anchored in the promises of God. In the midst of the chaos and uncertainty that shrouds the world, believers are called to remain steadfast in their faith, trusting in the unshakable promises of God's Word. As they await the imminent return of Christ, they do so with hope and anticipation, knowing that the trials of the present age are but a prelude to the glory that awaits them in the age to come. The concept of the seven trumpets holds profound significance within the eschatological framework of biblical prophecy. When one conjures the image of a trumpeter, it evokes thoughts of grandeur and majesty, often associated with royal proclamations or heralding the arrival of dignitaries. Similarly, the seven trumpets in the book of Revelation serve as instruments through which divine pronouncements are made. Albeit of a vastly different nature, each trumpet blast heralds a unique judgment upon the earth during the tumultuous period known as the Great Tribulation. The unveiling of these trumpets occurs in the wake of a visionary experience undergone by the Apostle John, wherein he beholds a vast multitude from every tribe and nation gathered in worship around the throne of the Lamb of God. Following this awe-inspiring spectacle, John witnesses a moment of profound silence in heaven a stark contrast to the thunderous tumult preceding it. It's a silence pregnant with anticipation, as seven angels, standing before God, are entrusted with the seven trumpets that are about to unleash divine judgment upon the earth. The significance of the silence in heaven cannot be overstated. It serves as a poignant prelude to the impending cataclysm, heightening the gravity of the events about to unfold. As the seventh seal is opened, the seven angels are granted their trumpets, signaling the commencement of a series of judgments that will escalate in intensity with each subsequent blast. The prayers of the martyrs, who bore witness to the horrors of the Great Tribulation, serve as a catalyst for these judgments. Vindication are likened to incense, a fragrant offering ascending to the throne of God. It's a poignant reminder of the potency of prayer and the divine response it elicits. As each trumpet is sounded, a different aspect of creation is subjected to divine judgment. The earth itself recoils under the devastation wrought by the first trumpet, followed by the seas, the water supply, and the celestial bodies. With each successive trumpet, the severity of the judgments intensifies, plunging humanity deeper into the throes of despair and suffering. Amidst the chaos and anguish, a curious phenomenon unfolds. Despite the torment inflicted upon those who have rejected God, there remains a stubborn refusal to repent and turn to Him. The human heart hardened by sin and rebellion proves resistant to the call of divine grace, even in the face of unprecedented calamity. The sixth trumpet unleashes a wave of death and destruction unparalleled in human history. An army of demonic entities, led by four angels, wreak havoc upon the earth decimating a third of its inhabitants. It's a sobering reminder of the consequences of unrepentant sin and the perilous state of a world estranged from its creator. As the events leading up to the final trumpet unfold, the stage is set for the culmination of divine judgment and the establishment of Christ's reign. While the Great Tribulation may not conclude immediately upon the sounding of the seventh trumpet, it marks a significant milestone in the unfolding drama of human history. With anticipation, believers await the fulfillment of God's redemptive plan, knowing that the trials of the present age are but a prelude to the glorious consummation that awaits them. The celestial signs that manifest in the sky hold profound significance, echoing throughout centuries of human history and continuing to captivate minds and hearts to this day. Within the realm of biblical prophecy, these signs serve as potent symbols embodying both mystery and awe, yet tinged with an undercurrent of apprehension. As Samuel Wigglesworth poignantly noted, there exists a disparity between the signs and wonders witnessed by the disciples of old and the perceived absence of such manifestations in contemporary times. 
This dissonance prompts introspection. Has God's power diminished? Or have our faith and expectancy waned, blinding us to the greater works promised by Jesus? Delving into the rich tapestry of prophetic literature, we encounter recurring motifs of celestial phenomena meticulously woven into the fabric of divine revelation. These signs are not haphazard occurrences or mere natural phenomena. Rather, they are intricately orchestrated manifestations imbued with profound significance. They serve as divine heralds, conveying messages of import to both God's chosen people and the wider world. Jesus himself alludes to these celestial signs, speaking of cosmic events involving the sun, moon, and stars. Far from being mere spectacle, these phenomena serve as harbingers of eschatological fulfillment, marking pivotal junctures in God's redemptive plan for humanity. Throughout scripture, the sun, moon, and stars function as celestial timekeepers, delineating epochs and epochs within the divine narrative. In the prophetic utterances of Joel, we encounter vivid imagery of the sun veiled in darkness and the moon bathed in crimson hues, signaling the onset of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. These cosmic portents transcend their physical manifestations, symbolizing the spiritual darkness and upheaval that will precede the Lord's return. Similarly, Jesus' prophetic discourse underscores the tumultuous upheaval that will characterize the end times with the sun eclipsed, the moon bereft of its luminance, and the stars plummeting from the firmament. These cosmic convulsions serve as metaphors for the spiritual turmoil and chaos that will engulf humanity in the days leading up to Christ's return. Yet, amidst the foreboding there exists a redemptive purpose behind these signs. Rather than instilling fear, they are intended to galvanize readiness and vigilance among believers. They serve as a clarion call to action, compelling us to live in anticipation of the imminent realization of God's kingdom on earth. In the midst of uncertainty and upheaval, the scriptures offer a glimmer of hope and assurance. Daniel's prophecy foretells the establishment of a kingdom by the God of heaven, an eternal dominion that shall never be vanquished. Likewise, the exhortation in Revelation to remain faithful unto death promises the crown of life to those who persevere in their steadfast allegiance to Christ. Ultimately, the celestial signs serve as steadfast reminders of our unwavering faith and hope in Jesus Christ, the embodiment of our salvation and deliverance. In His light, we find refuge amidst the tempests of life, anchoring our souls to the enduring promise of His eternal reign. As we gaze upon the marvels of the heavens, let us be reminded of our steadfast hope in the Lord, who holds all things in His sovereign grasp, in the grand tapestry of existence, there exists an immutable truth nothing can assail or annihilate us, as long as we cling steadfastly to the one who promises abundant goodness in the end. Though we may endure tribulations, bearing the weight of the world's trials upon our shoulders, our mortal bodies cannot be consigned to the earth's embrace, as long as our hearts and souls remain tethered to the divine. Our ultimate deliverance awaits, leading us to the coveted crown of life, where every tear will be wiped away and every pain will be extinguished in the radiance of eternity. Amidst the tumult and chaos that pervade our world, amidst the cacophony of suffering and despair, there exists a sanctuary of peace, a refuge found in extending love and compassion to those who bear the heavy burden of affliction. The downtrodden and dispossessed draw strength from their unwavering faith in God bolstered by the tangible expressions of solidarity and support extended by compassionate souls. It is through our acts of benevolence, our outpouring of generosity, that we become beacons of hope, illuminating the darkness with the promise of redemption and restoration. Yet amidst the whispers of false prophets and the portents of apocalyptic doom, it is imperative that we do not succumb to despondency or resignation. The harbingers of end times may seek to instill fear and paralysis, urging us to retreat into a passive state of waiting, but their prophecies ring hollow in the face of divine providence. Instead of resigning ourselves to a state of fearful inertia, let us seize the precious gift of time, fortifying our faith and courageously embracing the freedom to live boldly and purposefully. For those who tremble beneath the weight of impending doom, cowering beneath the covers in the dead of night, 
Know this the signs in the sky herald, not the harbinger of destruction, but the triumphant advent of God's eternal kingdom. The second coming of Christ depicted in vivid detail within the annals of Revelation is a testament to the sovereignty of the one who reigns supreme upon a white steed adorned with crowns and cloaked in righteousness, rides the faithful and true the embodiment of justice and mercy. With eyes ablaze with righteous fury and a tongue that wields the sword of truth, he leads the heavenly hosts in a divine procession, unleashing judgment upon the nations and treading the winepress of God's wrath. Yet, amidst the fury of his righteous indignation, there exists a profound love, a love that abhors sin, not for its own sake, but for the harm it inflicts upon his beloved creation. The prophet Isaiah echoes the sentiment of divine displeasure, calling upon humanity to heed the clarion call of repentance and turn from the path of wickedness. For sin, in all its insidious forms, serves as the antithesis of God's nature, severing the bond between creator and creation and inflicting irreparable harm upon the fabric of existence. Yet, in his infinite mercy, God extends the lifeline of redemption, offering us a chance to turn from our wicked ways and embrace the path of righteousness. Though the world may be shrouded in darkness, though evil may appear to hold sway, there exists a glimmer of hope, a hope, a hope rooted in the enduring promise of salvation. As we navigate the uncertain terrain of these tumultuous times, let us not be swayed by the allure of fear or the clamor of false prophets. Instead, let us heed the words of Scripture, remaining vigilant in our faith and steadfast in our commitment to love and serve one another. Whether the end times draw near or lie in the distant horizon, let us live each day with purpose and conviction knowing that our ultimate hope rests not in the ephemeral trappings of this world, but in the enduring grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the labyrinthine annals of eschatological discourse, one axiom stands unwavering the precise moment of Christ's return remains veiled in the impenetrable shroud of divine mystery. Jesus himself, in his earthly ministry, reiterated this enigmatic truth, declaring unequivocally, that neither angels nor mortals possess the prescience to discern the appointed hour of his advent. Yet, despite the inscrutability of this divine decree, the zeitgeist of our era is punctuated by events and phenomena that some fervently interpret as portents of the Ashkaton. Indeed, the current milieu seems fraught with omens of upheaval and tumult. From the ravages of famine and earthquake to the specter of war and persecution, the landscape of our world is rife with tribulation. Amid this maelstrom of affliction, it behooves us to ponder has there ever been an epoch in the annals of history devoid of calamity? Can we conceive of a time when the specter of death disaster and devastation did not loom ominously over humanity's collective consciousness? Consider, for a moment, the plight of early Christians dwelling amidst the crucible of Roman tyranny. Confronted with the stark reality of persecution and martyrdom, they faced the specter of death with unwavering resolve, their faith undimmed by the encroaching shadows of despair. Or cast your gaze back to the annals of antiquity, when the legions of Rome laid siege to Jerusalem, reducing the sacred precincts of the temple to rubble a cataclysmic event that could well have been construed as the harbinger of the end. Even as the tides of history ebbed and flowed, Ushering in epochs of conquest and calamity, humanity endured from the scourge of the Black Death that decimated entire civilizations to the ravages of global conflict that rent the fabric of nations asunder. The annals of time bear witness to the indomitable spirit of resilience that resides within the human heart amidst the swirling eddies of uncertainty. One question emerges with crystalline clarity. If indeed these are the end times, how then should we? as Christians respond. The Apostle Peter, in his epistle, offers a cogent response to this existential quandary. In the face of impending cataclysm when the heavens shall be rent asunder, and the earth consumed in the fires of divine judgment, Peter exhorts believers not to cower in fear or retreat into seclusion, but rather to embrace the mantle of holiness and godliness. For Peter, the clarion call of the end times is not a summons to abandon our post or to hoard provisions in anticipation of impending doom. 
Rather, it is a call to arms, a call to embody the virtues of righteousness and compassion to labor tirelessly in the vineyard of the Lord until the dawning of that great and terrible day. In the same vein, the Apostle Paul enjoins believers to seize the fleeting moments of opportunity to extend kindness and compassion to all, especially to those who share in the bonds of faith. Salvation, Paul reminds us, is not a prize to be hoarded but a gift to be shared, a gift that beckons to all who would receive it with contrite hearts and open hands. Yet salvation is but the first step on the pilgrim's path, a path that demands continual renewal and transformation. Paul, in his epistles, exhorts believers to be filled afresh with the Holy Spirit, to yield themselves wholly to the indwelling presence of Christ. This divine indwelling, far from being a solitary endeavor, is intended to be nurtured and sustained within the embrace of Christian community. As members of the body of Christ, we are called to foster fellowship and mutual encouragement, to walk alongside one another in the journey of faith, whether through active participation in the life of the local church or through the bonds of small group fellowship, we are called to bear one another's burdens and to uplift one another in love. In the crucible of adversity, let us stand firm in the knowledge that our salvation is secure, our hope unwavering. As we navigate the tumult of these end times, let us cling to the timeless truths of Scripture, anchoring our souls in the steadfast promises of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ.